Thank you, Jen, for the uh, nice introduction. So it's a great honor to be uh, with, uh, how do you pronounce Tamu? Uh, someone, uh, when I was a student, you know, we always pronounce it as a Tamu, but maybe it's wrong, uh, to the Texas NAM. Uh, it's first time I come to this South thing, in the Houston, this whole area, it's pretty nice. And speak of that, you know, I, uh, you know, I have been uh, working with uh, Dr. Dilma Tushera, who is the chair of the computer science, that uh, even before she came to, she come to uh, Texas and, 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 and right now she is the division director at the CCF and the ASF. I guess I will see her sometime in June for another meeting. Um, basically, it's, uh, you know, it's great. Today, today morning, I get a chance to, I don't know your background, but today morning, I get a chance to tour the uh, Reddit, the, the, the campus, or that was a very fantastic, you know, beautiful structure for the vehicle, autonomous vehicle, a uh, connected vehicle research. Um, but I know this this talk actually was uh, coming to the IDS, so I want to be a little bit you know, customized to the uh, to the data, you know, what kind of research. Um, giving the nature of this you know, data science and, and stuff um, relevant, you know, I think that I will try to make this talk a little bit of, you know, uh, more like a conceptual one. It's not necessary to go to a formula, you know, and stuff. So I hope this will uh, help you to, you know, getting a bigger picture by the end of this, uh, this talk. So basically, as you can see from this title, it's, a, it's a one of the concepts that we have been pushing in the last uh, few years, calling us uh, vehicle computing. And depending on where you come from, some of you might think that, oh, you know, you have been working on this for a decade, or even two decades, because people are working on vehicle network. You just think that they have been working on this. Uh, but I think that I hope I can, by the end of this talk, convince you that this is not just a vehicle network. It's, it's, it's a world be different. Um, that so let's uh, start this uh, journey. So basically, what I want to do is uh, two parts. You know, that the first part is I want to share with you that uh, what's the what is edge computing? Now, in other sense, you know, why the uh, sorry edge of vehicle computing? So why vehicle computing is going to be became the next thing? We you know from our point of view, and then I was spending the second half talking a little bit about you know some of the ongoing research uh, in in our car lab. So first, let's take a look at this uh, news. You know, be before you starting doing any of the research, I highly recommend that you take a look of the news. I know some of the particular students don't care about too much of the news. They care about what the advisor tell them. But I only encourage you to really, if you're looking for something, it's like a big thing is, is coming. You will, you actually can even from this news, you can easily tell. For example. We, I took a, a little piece from here. Basically, you can see that in the last few years, pretty much every single OEM, by the way, if you don't know what is OEM, if you think about it, GM, Toyota, they're OEM. So those are the company who put in the car you know, together, the, the vehicle. So those we normally come from Michigan, we always call them OEM. As you can see that pretty much every single OEM in this planet, they are team up with a cloud company here. Right, there must be a reason. So why, why, for example, even you know, you know for example, those are the uh, is, is one of the top uh, big company from in China, Shanghai. This is Europe, right? You can easily depend on what type of company uh, that uh, car you have. So it's, this is a very common today. That uh, okay. So as you can see, that this basically the reason is all these companies realize that in the future all these vehicles will be connected. That's what we call this, you know, connected vehicle, it's CV. It's not, it's not your CV, okay? It's a connected vehicle. As you can see that, it's a huge market is here. So for these companies, you have to really, you know, to do this. Let me give you an idea. For example, when we're working with Toyota, Toyota threw a question to us. Imagine, Toyota, one year, last year, 2022, alone, sell the 10 million vehicle. If you consider a vehicle's lifetime is 10 years, that means, Toyota alone have about 100 million vehicles. Imagine every single vehicle is connected. So what are they gonna do with this? You know, they need to collect data from all the, all the engines. Give you a rough idea. Like, even another autonomous vehicle, a regular vehicle you have, there are about 300 sensors on it. You can collect the entire, collect the engines and all kinds of the sensor data is like real time can be connected. 
So if you are thinking about this, you will see that the huge amount of data. I don't think any of the OEMs today even know how to handle that because they are not a, a, a data science trainer, right? Data, even data science is a new is a new program. They, none of them even know how to handle this type of data for for, the, for, for them. So that's why a huge market, but they don't know how to do it. So that's why you see all of this starting team up with the cloud. But obviously, you know that there is a, um, the, even the team up with the cloud. The cloud could be challenging very heavy, and then the re, the market, the uh, profit is going to be lost. So many of you right now, you, for example, depend on the type of vehicle you have. So you will be very surprised. For example, if I ask you, you imagine a Ford company, Ford Mega Eight, Ford Fusion. We have no Ford Fusion. It's just one of them say that, right? Can you guess when Ford make a vehicle for the fusion, how much they can make from this vehicle? As an OEM, just uh, can one of you randomly guess? One thousand. One thousand. Very brief. Any other uh, uh, other guess? Five thousand. No. Two hundred. That is what we are talking about. So for the video, so for the auto, I come from Michigan. You know, you know that this. For this all two companies, for them, every single thing you propose to them, you have to be very careful on the on the on the amount of the dollar. That's why today when I saw that a huge computing equipment, nobody gonna deploy that because imagine they, they sell a, a vehicle to you, they basically just making two hundred to five hundred dollars. If there's a huge recall on this, then basically they're not making any money. So that was today how this uh, you know these OEMs their you know space so that's why for them if they team up with each is cloud and cloud companies so what's they gonna do you know they're gonna charge them right so if every single starting charge them then basically all the profits go to the cloud company cloud so that's why if you pay, pay the news you probably already see that the gm just announced last week although i don't think that's a smart move gm announced they will not allow Apple CarPlay and Android uh, uh, Auto running on the future vehicles. And how any of you have seen this news? You might see this. So first, when you saw the news, you might say, "What are you thinking about?" You know, today, everybody is using CarPlay, right? Is using uh, all, all this. The GM. If you understand what I said just now, you will know the reason behind it. Because if this Auto OEM continues to allow those cloud company to, to penetrate on uh, their vehicle. They're not going to make any money. That was a really big challenge for, 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 for them. So before you start talking to the auto in, uh, in industry, you have to realize what's the landscape today. Then it will be much easier for you to talk to them because you probably, you, you continue to invest, uh, talk to them, and then you will see they're not interested in collaborating with you. You might propose a very cool algorithm developer at the Tamu, but then they don't, they're not interested to deploy it. The reason is there's a must be a reason behind it. So here to give you an idea about because today's topic is on the connected on the vehicle. I want to show you that how the things, the whole landscape is going to change for the whole uh, you know the auto industry. So imagine this is the vehicle you all left. Look, I just you know the cost I spending on this vehicle compared with this platform here. I don't want to ask you to guess because uh, just to give you an answer here is. The, the, the money I spend on this vehicle is only one tenth of this platform. One tenth. So the vehicle is uh, used to 2017. I only paid $20,000. But this guy himself cost me $200,000. So as you can see, the things is actually is a big thing to change. So if the vehicle auto industry don't change your business model, there's no future for them. Imagine you build a hardware, this will only one tenth of the money. Where are those things coming from? You know, you need to put in the sensors for the liners. But today, one of them, 128 line, you know, VOV liner itself cost eighty thousand dollars. Just just the one of the liner sitting on the top. So that that just gives you an idea that the whole thing, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna change. And then if you're looking for this guy inside this vehicle, what else are we talking about? We're talking about all this, you know. Different type of sensors, right? And then you have different perceptions. Several of you actually probably working on this, you know, perceptual algorithms. How do you, that's if you're in computer science, you know, basically that's what computer vision, right? Professor Lee is working in that space. So those are 
But how do we do that? And eventually, you need to make a decision because we want autonomous driving. You, it, it can make a decision for us. For example, you know, uh, while you are sleeping, we can change the lens and then you can do many things. Each of one of this is belong to the original grid. So all these things is something new. And that, that's what this is OEM you need to think about how to manage this type of thing. That's not enough. Because in, in here, in College Station, probably weather nice and nice, road is easy, you don't have this problem. Imagine if you're driving this in a, for example, in Michigan, well, when the big snow coming in, and then none of the science you can see. It. Whatever smart, you know, computer or visual algorithm, you can't detect the sign because sign is all covered by snow. So imagine that that's a very common. Half of the country is in that way. So how what are you gonna do with, with this? That's why there's a lot of big things you probably don't even think about. Map. You know, mapping is, is a huge thing today. The word is when I talk to uh, you know uh, Jen today morning is many places the companies are trying to build a high definition map of everywhere. So this way, when my car is here, once I know my location, I know there's a stop sign in front of me. Even I close my eyes because we, we can tell from this. So how is the map going to be built? Now of the OEMs is can is powerful enough to can build a map for the whole world. So that's why that's another big challenge for them. And most of this map might be seen in the cloud, so that so that they, they can do. So after you understand it, this whole whole thing is it's going to completely change. Imagine that the, uh, there is a news come out uh, a few months ago. Is one of the owners. Because of the cloud in Tesla is not functioning that day. So mm -hmm. he, he, I forgot, is he or she. So he cannot open the car, right? It's because today your car is, you have a key, you can open it. But if you go to this all connected vehicles, without the connected to the cloud, you, your car even cannot even open the door in that day. So that is all related to here. So the whole, whole landscape for, for the auto industry is changing. And uh, none of the companies today, I am fortunately have a chance to work in this you know, Toyota, GM, Ford, other companies. None of these companies are ready today to deal with this coming uh, you know, connected and a huge amount of data. So I hope as an IDS, you will feel very excited because those are the challenges you are trying to address. To give you a sense about where this data comes from, what type of data, because you want to handle it. So this is showing you an example of this picture I took in from uh, you know, another report. But you don't need to care about the, all this detail, just to give you an idea. Running your sensor, running your vehicle, you have different type of sensors. Some of them can see very far, clear, but some of them you see your, your neighbors. You have you have a radar, you have a LIDAR, you have a camera, you have a, all kinds of things. So those are the multi-modality data. I guess in your classroom, maybe your some of the professors talking about this, right? You know, it's this time series kind of data, how you're going to be processing them. So that will be something perfectly for you to deal with. So I want to use this example to show you that why that vehicle computing is coming here. So once you see this as a vehicle, you know, today you buy a vehicle, maybe spending like $28,000. Know, In the future, if it's so expensive, right? So there's a vehicle already have all type of sensors around it. And you also have a very powerful computing equipment with them to think about it. And at the end, the vehicle itself can be autonomous driving. So while you, we are sitting here, you know, giving a talk and listening to uh, lectures, your vehicle, what, what is the vehicle doing right now? Your vehicle basically right now is just a western, just a park, uh, occupied, uh, although you have a lot of land here, but still you're occupied a parking lot and do nothing, right? So how about if I tell you in the future, you got a vehicle while you are sitting here. Your vehicle goes as a Uber, pick somebody from this going around, and then can make some money for you. At the end of the day, when you come back, you actually make some money while you're sitting here. Do you like that? Obviously, you like it. This is this is the future. That's why we, I, I say that here is the future. So just to show you an example. Today, for example, in, in some of the roads, it has a holes and a different type of the eye, uh, black eyes and stuff. So this can be easily detected with those kind of uh, sensors since your vehicle already have those sensors. So they can do a real time detection and then leverage the edge. You can report in there the edge sends the cloud and then you can notify you know, appropriate entities. Or maybe even can tell the vehicle is coming. You know, if there is a hole here, please you know, you know, take action as early as possible. So this is just a music example to show you you know, for example, US government putting $1 trillion on the infrastructure. 
So what if you are there, my president, what do you think you're gonna use this money? You will think oh, we're gonna build all this infrastructure? Maybe it's not necessary. You know, you could build some infrastructure, but the more important thing actually is how do you maintain this infrastructure? You know that uh, when President Biden allows that uh, allows this one trillion uh, dollar kind of a plan in Pittsburgh that day. Actually, in the morning, there's a bridge crashed in the in just collapsed during in Pittsburgh. The reason is you don't know how do you know this uh, infrastructure is what's the health status. So within today's approach, some of your colleagues might be in the civil engineer, they deploy sensors, but many times the sensor probably is already well out. They're not really working. But using the vehicles driving around in real time to detect what's going on is going to be perfect. So this can be used to guide you what they're going to do on this, and then even through the traffic control. So some of my colleagues say that if you can reduce the speed of the vehicle on the road, actually you, you probably can help that uh, you know, get less damage on, on the vehicle. Or during the, particularly during the rainy uh, time or during the snow time. So that is beyond today's talk. This is what gives you an idea that this vehicle itself is a mobile sensor. It's a mobile computing platform. It's also a, you know, this can be used to do a lot of things. And this is not necessary as a transportation tool because you don't need a human sitting on it. So that's what this autonomous connected vehicle can enable those the whole things change. If you think about even bigger, the future city is going to be even changed in a way. Today, when you go to Houston, for example, yesterday there's a game, you know, Houston uh, Ultras has a, has a game, and then there's a lot of cars that are driving around. In the future, you probably don't need to, because while you guys are watching games, the, your car, you don't need to park it here. The car can go to somebody else. By the time you need to leave the game, and then the car is coming in and pick you up. So that's the whole, the way use the vehicle is completely changed. So that is the vision we are talking about today. It's the vehicle computing era is coming. But you can see that the vehicle itself is just a mobile computing platform. It's moving around, okay? You could be the owner of this, so you are the owner of it, but this guy is working with different type of things. So I gotta show you one example. For example, police vehicle, you know, body one camera and working with the car, and then they can do a lot of cool things to provide the safety for the police officers. And you are dealing with the scooters, you know, you know depending on your cameras. Probably I didn't see scooter today, but I assume you might have, particularly in those big cities. And you can do a lot of things, you know, at the home and etc. That's the we will be talking to all these kind of different type of IoT things, and then they will talk to the Azure server, eventually go to the cloud. So you can see this is a four tier kind of structure. So what does this mean to you? This means to you is if you want to develop a data science, data kind of you know processing platform, you need your system needs to be able to run all of this. And this then they can they can talk to the other people. So if you don't, if your system cannot open to talk to the other people, then you probably will not be able to, you know, diffuse all these type of functions. You know, that was the, uh, that, that the, we talk about the vehicle computing. So this is why we think it's going to be changed. Today, when we talk about, when you buy a vehicle, you're spending, you invest on this money here, but your vehicle's utilization probably is just 10%. If you drive to the school, park it there, and go home. But in the future, your vehicle's utilization is close to 100%. You do there's you no parking spot. You need to pay parking fees. When you come here, vehicle is gone, and then make money for you. When, you, when they come back, so you just collect the money. All that because this is where, and you don't need this amount of vehicle. You don't need a parking structure. So all this huge parking structure probably you don't need to anymore. But that will be foundationally changed for the next century. If it goes back to the last century, when Ford introduced the first uh, first Model T in nineteen uh, ten. We're taking like 100 years, we're using the vehicle this way. But then the next 100 years will be something like this going to happen. We're probably not going to happen tomorrow, but during our most of our time here, you will, you will see something like this going to happen. So now let's go back and talk a little bit about what are the challenges? Because we are coming here, we are scientists, right? We are not just coming here to sell a vehicle. So we are, so here is an estimation come from Dell that is. Uh, I should have told this guy, right? Sorry. So, huh? oh, it's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I change your mind. It's not the help. So, give me your idea that uh, here is the data that's going to be generated. So, those uh, they call that 
you know, some people call the intelligent connected vehicle, ICV, Japanese, uh, Japan, they like that. So basically is by 17% of the data will be come from here. Because imagine those vehicles is driving all around, they are collecting a lot of, you know, the data here. So what are you gonna do with, uh, with this? So here is another estimation from Intel, and this was 2017. They like each vehicle, each day, just, just a rough idea, they will generate a four terabytes of data a day on one vehicle, okay? This data, even today, is not like that. A real time vehicle, one day can generate 35 terabytes of data. So this is what, what we are talking about. So you need to handle this. And then energy, energy efficiency wise, this is like a, a refrigerator is running on your, on your vehicle. It's like a one, you know, one K watts is it, running. So you, there's a lot of challenges here you need to deal with, deal with it. So here is the first challenges I want to show you is computational latency because you are doing this in real time, right? So that uh, uh, there is a lot of applications eventually going to run on your vehicle. If you, if you follow what I said, is your future vehicle is not going to be just on the transport for the driving purpose. Autonomous driving, driving itself is just a one small part of the vehicle computer because you, you rely on this, but you have a lot of data. There's another models, someone else writing an app. You might be downloaded on your vehicle. The other one can be used to do something else. For example, one of the uh, projects we are working with GM is we do real time battery uh, health, uh, you know, for the battery for your EVs, right? EV got to be the future. You probably agree with that. So the, the battery management, in the real time, how are you going to manage that? These have no relationship with driving itself. But this guy also using deep learning models running here. So give me a rough idea. Today, a connected autonomous vehicle probably have 60 different machine learning models running at the same time. If you, and they're all on the different type of the tasks. Some of them is what we call the hard real time, right? Like a driving, you, you don't want to hit a pedestrian. You really need to get it done as, as fast as, as possible. Some of them is absorbable. Some of them is not even necessarily be, be real time at all. For example, you want to detect, uh, to detect that, you know, if there's a problem with a uh, water man issue, you know, the water is on the street and et cetera. So those are the things can be detected. Even if you have some delay, fine. But that'll give you an idea is computational, Latency, how are you going to be running all so many models in a computer, uh, in, on a vehicle, you know, uh, and satisfy all the requirements? That is a big challenge. So you might think, oh, how about I get a very powerful machine just running there? I already remind you at the beginning of this talk, none of these auto industries, they, don't, they want to put in a really <laughs> small market. The power market, first of all, it's very expensive. So they better want to use that kind of computing you know, you put it here, less than hundred dollars. Okay. And then consumer mm -hmm. 10 watts. Okay. That is the idea. But today, if some of you if you're working on this uh, on the vehicle, well you can yeah. power the watts and then you're you are you are you're running you have a huge you know uh a media device which you call which probably running like five five hundred watts. These kind of things is okay for for the student or for the company to do a prototype. It's not going to be good to the reality. That's why when, when I working, uh, since we're working with OEMs, I asked my students, we need to, every single method you propose, don't go to double digital watts. If you more than that, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Because nobody's going to use this. That's just to stay as published on paper. It's okay, but it's not very useful. But today, you can do that. You know, you just need to push yourself. You know, and I finish the whole thing in five watts. If you want to have some take out of, of today's talk, this is one of the challenges I want to throw to you. Five watts, can I do all these things? That is a real cool. Because otherwise, you know, you, you do this, it's not very, very helpful, okay? So you're pushing as much as possible and using those cheap costs on, you know, the community on the shelf to, to, to design this type of models. That is really going to be very helpful. But there's another argument. Okay, fine. When we do research, we get children are very powerful. But then, when there's a mass production, it might be the cost of it. Yeah, that is also true. I don't want to uh, against that. That is, that is true. But it's always good for you to start pushing yourself on the energy, the energy consumption and the, the, the machine itself. So, uh, challenge two. Challenge two is I already mentioned that earlier is the transmission cost. 
because each machine, not machine, each vehicle generates 35 terabytes of data, even using the latest, whatever, 5G, 6G, or 7G, you know, that you transfer this data to, to, to the center or to somewhere itself. It's not a free. But what I, as you can see that here, when we talk, everything is related to the, eventually is economy. You know. This is not a free. For example, when you buy a vehicle, how many of you are willing to pay 50 bucks each month? Just to pay for them to connect the, to collecting your data, you don't, right? But, you know, when I uh, several years ago, when I have I have a, I have a uh, GM vehicle, they give me like a one year for free on star. Then they start charging me money. I cancel it immediately. Why do I want to pay like fifty bucks a year just to, to do this? Let you to collect my data for your help. So transmission cost is a huge. Can I give you an idea? If you think about it, in year 2022, each of the connections for the vehicle in the United States itself is already cost $1.4 billion. So eventually, it's who pay for this? You ask, ask the, the, the end user, customer to pay this, I guess you don't, right? So you probably you don't want to do that. And then the OEM needs to pay this. The OEM is that I already just make $200 per vehicle. How can I afford this? So that is another uh, reality. So if you are writing a paper saying, okay, I imagine my future vehicle is all connected, you know, we can access the data from another vehicle. You must still dream about it. Okay, because that is not the reality. The, the reality here is how you gonna who how are you gonna get this, get, get this data? Where is this who gonna pay for this transmission call? This is something I want you need to think about. So otherwise, writing a paper is easy. Oh, we can just collect it on my my neighbor's data use this to do some you know cool stuff. Yes, that is fine. But to put in reality, you know, this uh, communication has been there for so many years. Have you seen your vehicle talking to the neighbors? No, I don't think any of you. One of my students last week did a demo at uh, Florida for Florida Department of Transportation. We did that, but the other way very cost because we use the OBU device talking to the Florida, they deployed a couple of you know, other road. That prototype itself cost 100K in order to show you a demo a vehicle, talking to another vehicle, say, hey, there is a pedestrian in front of you. This is, again, it's just for demo purposes. But to, to the reality, it's not. So that is a cost in the here. It's not because the technology is not there, it's because it's cost. So far, there's nobody can have find the idea who had a pay for that what I want to share you with this is really a cool thing. But when I say this doesn't mean we're not doing research, right? Edge computing can be very helpful. You don't need to go through all the all the data to the cloud. So maybe just using a shorter range communication in you know, one of the edge that you can do in this. So we actually work with Toyota dealing with this uh, on this right now. So as I mentioned, Toyota last year alone have 10 million vehicles. They they are desperately need some technology here to help them to reduce this cost. Because for them, this is their life, you know, that's how we do this. Excuse me. Question. Is it okay to ask a question? A anytime, yeah. All right, so here, I think the second challenge is very intriguing. So much data are you know, by the cost constraint. I'm thinking from the data experience, not all the data are is useful, meaningful, right? Exactly. So is there any way to really of course, using more computing to extract useful features, exactly. only transform those semantically meaningful things selectively to reduce the data. I but, guess there is a lot of research on that, right? Yes, a lot of people is is, is working on this, trying okay. to trying to use the computing right. to fill out the data, even just taking some parameters. Yes, but I, I, yeah, but I, well, I I'm just scared if we really need to transmit all this thirty five dB, that will be waste of resources. Okay. Exactly. But again, that's dependent on the needs. Sometimes they, uh, you know, depend on the application itself. Some some application needs some data. Yeah. So that, that was yeah. But you're absolutely right. There are already people because yeah. So so it's uh, in order to implement this vision, you have to uh, on the vehicle. So we need our wisdom to decide what data, which piece, or how to extract meaningful information from the data. And it's too, too adaptive. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. For example, people do some compression, people say that this, you know, you 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 might, you know, some also raise a regulation. You know, for example, 
in some places, uh, in China, for example, every single of this, uh, the, the data collector, they need, want you to keep one month. So either on, on your vehicle have a huge storage, you keep it for one month, or you can shift it, you know, during the, during the evening, you know, we get somewhere, you have a Wi-Fi, you can start to transfer data, uh, develop some protocols there. Yeah. But again, all this is because of cost here. It, 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 it's an issue. I, I hear we just want to show, yeah, later on. But that, that is definitely is an idea. The third one I want to mention here is many computer science just don't know that. Is this really a cyber physical problem? What does that mean is, for example, you want to do autonomous driving using this very cool algorithms, right? You optimize it, you know, based on the sensor, and then I make a decision, ah, huh, I should have stopped, right? So let's say you see somebody in front of you, you want to hit the brake and stop it. So if I ask you, so let's say your algorithm is a super. And then your latency is zero. That's the maximum, right? Anything divided by zero is infinity. That's already the best. So you detect anything, zero seconds, right? So that's not the end of the story because you, you detect the taking zero seconds, but then the, the car needs to, uh, the cam plus, they need to make a decision to, to you know, to, to deal with this uh, brake. And then when you hit the brake, this is a physical system. So here I show you. This is one of my collaborators that uh, they have Lin Peng and Mackenzie Hongqi. Some of you probably don't know is is a car made in China. So you have a different type of vehicle. Take a look at this. When you step on the accelerate, when you step on the brake, every single of this taking time. So even your decision is zero, and your computation is zero, but this physical uh, time is still there. So that's why when you do a research in a vehicle, please. Keep in mind that the same message I want to say today is end to end latency. Is you know, end to end means you when, you when you detect something to the end, eventually the car can make it fully accurate to the stop. You know, that is a total latency, is what you need to care about. It's not purely just my algorithm so fast and then I, I can do it fast because you have to consider this, you know, we call the computing control. And you know that the kind of coordination. So you, you have to think about this before you can really make, make any uh, claim. You're you gotta you know develop some really cool things. I hope this you guys still with me, right? Any questions on this? I know many computer science, scientists you, you don't know this because they, they thought, oh, if I said it, stop it, my kind of stop it. Have you think about you know if you have a chance to test drive autonomous vehicle, you will see the big difference. There's another thing which human, I didn't mention human here. So during the early days when I was uh, toured a couple of these uh, test drive on these vehicles, the feeling is so bad because when the autonomous vehicle, when they see uh, uh, something, they calculate the distance and the ways they hit the brake, right? I guess depending on how you, your, your personality, some of you probably hit very fast, some of you hit slowly, and all this is going to be impacted the distance, but your eyes actually real time to make a judgment on how to do this. Make sure you feel comfortable. For example, when I drive, my wife is always ahead because the way I did it sounds like, I feel like this is okay. So, but, but she always feel like, I'm not staying like the break. We, we should stop right now. So every single people have their own kind of, uh, you know, the feeling. But autonomous vehicle, today when you design an algorithm, have you considered this? Nobody, you don't even know how to characterize this, right? So basically, when you have a chance to see an autonomous vehicle, be prepared. The vehicle will be stopped. <clears throat> you know, either you, you will be so scared, you know, you almost hit somebody because they don't consider your, your feeling. That is related to the vehicle dynamics, you know, the human and the human body when you're sitting on the vehicle. So all these things are not there today. So that, that just, I want to share with you some of these interesting things. You know, you really need to for the whole the whole vehicle you know, to be predictable to we'll make sure that I, I'm very comfortable sitting here so that just like myself is driving and then I can you know get there very comfortably. Otherwise you know, it's very difficult for you to uh, to go. So that I will uh, yeah if you're interested we actually have a paper on the wireless communication talking about computing communication and the control. You need to be co-designed in order to come out with real cool uh, you know the ideas. So then we were looking for, okay, I assume everything is changing. Now what's, what's gonna change on a vehicle? Those are the traditional vehicle. 
Your vehicle today probably have 150 to 200 ECUs. You know, your ball, your steering, everything. Each of them by one of them controlled by themselves. This is not going to be the future. The future vehicle will be more look like this. So you, your vehicle will be most likely going to have two pretty powerful machines. You know, like one is digital to drive because there's a safety concern that you have to. Then maybe there's another one, the low controller, you know, this uh, uh, computing equipment. You don't need to care about uh, this, uh, the, the, the names. Okay? So there's a, they have a different zone controller. And then, but then, uh, two in the middle became more powerful because the software defined architecture. So everything is a software. So you don't need to have so many easy use anymore. You just have a two few a few of these, and then you even your brake completely the software and internet. You don't really need it. the way when you step on the brake is just making you feel like you're stable on the brake. Actually, it's the code is doing that. All software defined. Okay. So when you turn the steering, you feel like there's a pressure here against you, right? That's because they're trying to make this make you feel like it that way. You actually, it's just a software. It's implemented in here. So this is also something is going to be changing. Uh, so that was like uh, you know the software. If you haven't heard about this, you know future vehicle is all software defined vehicle. So that was uh, again, you know this this, this vehicle starting talking to the end server goes to goes, goes to the cloud. So I hope give you an idea. In a software defined vehicle, so basically you can think about the, the four type of services kind of running on that. You have safety uh, services, obviously you want uh, collision avoidance. Those are most of this related to the drive. This is the only part of this. And then mobility service have no relationship with that. You know, you, you, you can do many other things. For example, self-parking will be will be a very a few a feature that will be the first one will be deployed because people need that. When you, when you get to a something, you can just uh, just to get out of the vehicle, the vehicle will be automatically find a place to park. Information service, you want to do more cool things uh, on the vehicle and, and other things. Computational service. Remember, your vehicle have a powerful computing equipment here. You can use this to do something else. For example, in big cities, you know, have you heard about the new vehicle delivery? This is that idea when, when Amazon is trying to deliver you to something, you can just give them the permission. They can open your trunk, put your stuff into your vehicle instead of go to your what you call the apartment. Food delivery, they can deliver the stuff of, of your car to wherever your car is. Then your car is going to take it. So those are the things you can just imagine, right? Like, I know during the COVID, you guys order a lot of food from Houston, I hope. And then when they come here, they can, you know, you can just uh, send your car go there just, uh, just to take it. So those are the things. They can do other things. You know, it's just uh, not necessary when human has been involved. So again, I hope by this time, you are with me that there's a big things is changing to happen. So here we're trying to show you a little bit about what is the future business model will look like. I guess for all of us, we like it. So imagine the future, you get a vehicle for free. You don't need to pay any money. You just get that vehicle. Why? Because you take a vehicle, your vehicle you, if you sign an agreement, let your vehicle computing for the city, but different for different kind of uh, service customers, for example, city, health, map, because a mapping company needs your vehicle to help them build, rebuild the new map. Because nobody can build a map for everyone. So they have to rely on your vehicle. So then when you get a vehicle, you provide service. You see, we draw a few coins here. You get money, four coins. And then service provider said, well, we provide the infrastructure with this to you. You pay $1 to them. And then you go to this hardware, right? You know, NVIDIA, or Intel, whoever make this, they take $1. And then you go to OEM. OEM also take $1. Eventually, there's $1 goes to you. Because you are the owner, you provide this platform to do this type of things. If this kind of business model, when I first give a talk at the GM, nobody even buy this. Today, actually, this, this, I already see this, uh, this companies starting, not only as big as I do, I'm not, a, I'm just using my imagination to think about this. This will be the, the way how the vehicle will be, will be working here. So you, as, as you can see from, from this whole process, Everybody getting a share, and then they share the whole the whole cost. So that means either you pay ten thousand getting a vehicle, and then you collect the money. Eventually, you make money. So you you might think, are you, are you crazy? You know, talking about this. 
then they give you an idea. You know, you, you heard about this, you know, the wind, uh, you know, the renewable energy, right? In Germany, there's a 20% of the uh, of the households today pay zero on the electricity. Okay? You, you, this has already been there for a long time. What, what happens is very easy. For, you, for the family, they put in the solar power on their, uh, on their roof, and then the original investment is, I don't know the exact number, let's say original investment is $10,000, but then, they collect the energy is so much that they, they don't need to. They sell this V2, you know, the house to grid. They sell this energy back. Eventually, the money they, they collect back is, is enough to cover that. So they don't need to pay anything for their home electricity is there. This, this, this business model has already been proved success. It is, this, what I view this is will be just the next thing is, is gonna happen. So for all the OEMs, they realize that that's why if you are working with the, uh, working on the data science, if you want to ask a, uh, GM or Ford, ask them to give you their data, nobody going to give you their, their data because they know that. It is the data eventually make, they can make money. That, that's the why. Okay, I hope you know, we relate to, to, to the data now. Do you think your vehicle data belongs to you? Probably not. Do you think the data belongs to the you know, OEMs? You know, OEM thing. That's why today they, they don't give you the interface. If you want to get in their data, it's impossible. That's why it is. Uh, they know that this is their future. How do they make money? It's not the car itself. Car is not going to be that important anyway. Sooner it's going to be you know, very easy. It's really it's the data on it. So that is it's, it's the data. I'm so glad here in the IDS, right? It is the data going to change the whole the auto industry in the future. But that's why they, as I mentioned at the beginning, they don't want to, you know, give this data to the cloud. They want to have their own data center. They want to handle the data themselves. Everything is here. So right now, there is no such a very clear picture. Here. Everybody is still, you know, trying to change the, the whole spectrum, you know, the whole landscape. But unfortunately, nobody is big enough to change the whole. Say, okay, I want to do this. No, no, that, nobody can do that. So I think. It, at least one thing is clear. One of the companies called Hero Technology is a mapping company, as you can see. Originally, a uh, couple of OEMs only. Now, there is a consortium of OEMs starting only because everybody knows that map, map will be the key, but uh, nobody is big enough to take care of all the map. Instead, Audi, BMW, you know, they, you know, Volkswagen, they're studying. How about we co chair this, this data company? That was uh, maybe it's another potential model. <laughs> is there is there um, uh, two questions? Is, is there do you have any sort of parallel case where that model has been implemented? Um, and you know, I, th I think um, you know, think about your energy example. I'm, I'm not sure it's directly comparable. Here's the reason. You know, with energy, I, I think the benefit remains constant over time. You know, we're always going to be using energy. People are going to be consuming energy. If you think about information and information about roads being provided to uh, city. to cities, I, I'm wondering if the value of that information becomes diluted as there's more adoption of 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 mobile sensors in in cars. You know what I mean? Whereas I, 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 I think it doesn't get the energy case. It doesn't get diluted. So yeah, I, I completely agree with you. This is just like that, uh, inside the rate. It, it really depends on, 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 on this, right? On the, how do the city of government are uh, willing to pay for this? Uh, good news, I, for example, when I was in Detroit, I worked with the chief mobility officer in uh, the city of Detroit. Now, when I moved to you know, Delaware, I work in the city of New York. Actually, the city is willing to, they are. There's a movement right now. So getting a chance of working with the director of uh, planning, because they, they are willing to study using the taxpayer the money. Because this is a part of the infrastructure. So the, once they realize that this is how important it is, so they were starting, starting putting some money. But I agree with you, probably not big enough to cover the whole the whole thing. Yeah, that, that was that was a little bit exaggerated, just to want to show you is there's a potential here. Yeah, but uh, you know, obviously you see those devices, right? Uh, Apple is making a lot of money. I saw a news uh, in, uh, in, you know, a couple of days ago. And, you know that what they are doing here is every single app you download it here, so that uh, whatever revenue you generate, you give it to twenty five percent to Apple. This will be the same model. What is this uh, OEM is going to do? What do they want to do? 
So you 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 might using this app can generate some revenue, but you know some of the users, for example, think about this. In the future, when I have a have a vehicle, the same thing. You and I have the same vehicle, but I can buy. I can spend a thousand dollars, or maybe like a Tesla's autopilot, which costs twelve thousand. So in the future, is you can buy autopilot, autopilot if the interface is already open. I can deploy that on my on my vehicle. So if I like you know, Tesla's you know, the, the driving skills, make me feel comfortable, I can go ahead and buy autopilot running on my vehicle. And then you, if you like uh, something developed by Toyota, you can download something from Toyota on your vehicle. So, so those might be as another potential is all the things. Once you open up this interface, so you know if you have a revenue that you can share with you, you can start in you know, how do you drive, how do you do all these things. It just became a software, so you you can just download. So if that company can can have a, if someone that developed the best driver. Customize the driver, and then maybe all of us just download the, the, the same drive here. So this is even further to go. Uh, so then, that, then that will be another revenue generated here for the people to, to share. Today, the problem is nobody is willing to share their data or even their control interface, like an auto driver they are challenging. They need to sign NDA with the GM. They don't even want you to read any single byte from, from the vehicle. It's because of the, the this is their secret. Uh, I think it's because they don't have a good the business model on here. So they can't make money from the data. If, if one day there is an opportunity, I'm sure they might be willing to open this up and then the people can do this. Okay, I know that's, that, that's not, this is just, a, today is more like a vision here. You know, we're talking about what we're gonna have maybe 30, 30 years from now. So to implement this, now we still need to do user today the research, right? So we can't just, uh, Sitting here waiting for this app. There's a lot of challenges here. For example, when we go to you know business, the last thing is who will be here? Even business school, the people can even look at this. And uh, on the top of this is I, I list uh, quite a few on um, you know benchmarking, for example, workload, and then if you the real-time uh, operating system. So for a car to talk to a neighbor, getting an information here today in this world, there's no such a thing as can make this happen. So you really need, in order to make some real-time decision, you need a distributed real-time operating system and really make this thing make sense. Otherwise, you can write in a paper, oh, you know, vehicle network, I can tell you that I'm getting a data. This could be just a part of the papers. It's impossible. This is itself actually pretty challenging here. How do you want to write a program on this? For example, if you're teaching a class, vehicle computing, how can you ask the student to write a code? You know, have you imagined that you can write a code on a vehicle today? You don't know how to write a vehicle like that, right? Energy consumption, because electrical vehicle is EV. You know, you know, most future vehicle will be electrical power, battery power. You don't want all this energy spending on your computing equipment. You know, thirty percent of the computing then you lost. Today, with all these cars is competing, when you buy our vehicle, you care about it. how many mileage per gallon, right? In the future, will be how many mileage per you know, better. You know, that's the same thing. So, if, if how you going to optimize this? So, I don't have that amount of time. But I just want to show you that uh, uh, there is a lot of challenges down the road. I know I already taken quite a few time here. I will have a few minutes here to talk about very highly about it uh, because you can see many things on our website. So, if you're interested, we, we can talk in offline. So, the car lab we we starting on this. Myself is a computer science trained. So that when we started working on this, we found out that, oh, there is no such a platform available, you know, that to allow our students to, to do this type of research. Although they have some little robots, but the robots itself is not an open interface. As I said, I care about how to write a code on the vehicle. This is something, as a computer system people, you will know that. So that's why we started design a hybrid one. You know, we even the student building, uh, you know, in the school drive, building one by one, building this. But the good news is uh, all wheel drive, with all the sensors, even with a battery powered, and then you can do a lot of, you know, all kinds of research you can imagine on that. And then once you build a multiple, you can do Bluetooth, you can do like, like all kinds of communication. And at the same time, we also, uh, all the way to, 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 to the hydro, and a student doing the delivery, you know, so one of my students is an auto, you know, auto engineer um, training. So he, de he designed that, and then he asked some company in China, make the piece, and then he, he built that vehicle all by himself. So 
Yeah, that's just giving you an idea. And then on top of that, so 2018, I wrote an article. We argue that the future vehicle should have an open vehicle data analytics platform. So open V that. Coincidentally, when I first gave this talk at the GM, nobody even talked to me. Today, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, IBM approached me and said, hey, you know what? You know, IBM pushed the Red Hat, right? Red Hat is one or two deployed on the future operating system running on, on, on what is their, their thing. So they want, can we uh, using your open VDAP, you know, can we start deploying some, some stuff? So I was like, wow, this is good. Eventually, somebody started to believe that future vehicles uh, need a data analytics platform there. But not that it will be there, but at least uh, just now when I answer your question is, they need, you need to have a mechanism here so that this data can be accepted. That means you need a library, you know, different type of library, and etc. And, and once we have this library, for example, if somebody develops a driving behavior library, then you don't need to re redesign the library. You can use it. For example, you can use the driving behavior library to detect that if this guy is, you know, fuzzy, because you, if the car is not moving smoothly, you can detect it immediately. You don't need to rewrite this code. So once this is open up, so you just need, just like today, when you're writing a code, Call a library, right? Many of you, if you're writing any code, you you barely write this lower level code. So that's what I'm thinking. The future of vehicle should be like this, but today it's not like this. And then, for example, we we develop quite a few applications. I always ask the students to start in PhD writing a real application on the vehicle. So this way, you know what's the challenges. For example, this is the one. Is the basic idea is we take a Uber. How do you know I'm safe? So this is like we're using microphone, OBD sensors, and eventually, I don't have time to go, but just show you that. Then the, another one is that we have been found the Department of Homeland Security is looking for, can we, when the police officer goes out, outside and leave their car, when they're talking to the, you know, somebody, how do you know it's safe? And particularly, the once they get out of the car, the environment is, is becoming challenging for them, right? So what, what we do is, on front of the vehicle, there's a camera, so we rely on this camera to detect the environment. This police officer right now is in. So even if there's something wrong, you can you know, generate these kind of things to remind them there's danger next to you. This actually is the most, a lot of police officers being injured or killed is because of, because of this. Once they get out of the vehicle, the environment is out of their control. So that's the, one of the projects we have been working with. Uh, the, uh, as a reference architecture has been deployed, actually, you know, in one of these uh, real scenarios. And then we also look at how do you write the code? As I mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, we really care about how do you write the code. The, the here is a, show you an example. Once we already implemented this. So now in my class, students can use three lines of code implemented the following function. I read my camera. If I detect there's a pedestrian in front of me, I hit the brake. Okay. This just three lines of code, you can do it. This is because we already implemented the whole thing. And analytics. So although it's not perfect, obviously it's not perfect, but I want to show you that this is something is amazing. Is if vehicle computing one day became like popular, you need this type of thing. That's why as a computer scientist, you have a lot of things to do. Because you, you, you need, we already have an operating system here. The vehicle is almost empty. There is no such things. Today you ask somebody writing this code, you need to pay $160. Thousand dollars higher somebody even a year maybe they can write in this application. I'm, I'm saying this is the truth. People don't know how how really can do that. You know, on the data here is you have multiple sensors. How are you going to be multi sensor data fusion eventually make a decision and um, And then on the multiple vehicles, how are you going to be let them you, if you're doing you know different vehicles have different hardware. You you can't be assume that all the vehicles are just going uh, on FPGA. Or, or TPU, or GPU, right? So some of them maybe you have a truck, maybe running this. So then, how are you going to be running different things on top of it? It's another potential, you know, challenges that we can writing a thesis and etc. Energy efficiency is another one, uh, but I'm uh, yeah, I'm not going to go to the details. Basically, what we well, this is an NSL funded project. It's, this is the last year, funded four years ago. Basically, is looking for, we are building a we call a bus. It's a Autonomous battery operating system for the how do you manage the EV you know, you know, on, on your vehicle. Basically, what we did is we built all this, we, we instrument every single wheel with, with a different sensor so we can measure the current, everything. So, this way, we're building a prediction model on how 
this energy has been consumed as a, as a vehicle. And then this paper is going to be next month in the ICRA, in the Vatic conference. Tesla probably already have this, but there are private companies, nobody knows what to do. So our paper will be the first to actually give you an idea about where this energy really goes in these places. Although it's not perfectly as a vehicle, but it's just in your sort of a sense here. So another thing we found out is, is something, one of my PhDs who just graduated is, is on this uh, DNA inference. So when you develop these models, you, you probably assume that uh, the same algorithm, and then they will be, the, the performance will be the same. But when we found out that this is not the case. So when you're running on a different, even a different input, the same things, the performance is very pretty big, as you're pretty big. And the, this is particularly dangerous when you drive out on the vehicle out, so if I have this, we want the predictability, but if, if today is weather is bad, you take a, I'm mean, exaggerating, you take a five seconds to make a decision. When the sun shines, you take a one second to make a decision. Now the world is very dangerous. So as a system here is we need to deal with that. How are you going to be take, deal with this uh, time of variation for this different uh, uh, inverse models on that? So this paper we're showing that there's a, we look at the, the, the whole, the source, the source code here, so you will find out that the different, uh, different levels you can see, there's a variation here, we need to do it, thank you. Um, that's the insight. And then last year in Houston, the RTSS, we have a paper here, it's just how we can improve it. We're showing a uh, very cool, uh, the idea, this idea is very simple. The idea is like, uh, if I see a friend, once I make a decision, it's too late for me, right? Like exactly, like if I see a frame, I know that this frame, by the time when I make a decision, it's already too late. I just throw this frame away. Got it? Yeah. That idea itself is just, you, you have like a th every second, 30 seconds, uh, 30 frames here. But if I know that based on the, the earlier results, I know this, this guy is already been delayed. So I, I just threw it away. So this is, this is the way that uh, how we can sort of make this uh, real time perception is uh, predictable. I, I, I don't get it. What if uh, the information of that frame is critical? It's too late. It's too late really anyway. Late. The accident has happened already. It's already, yeah. Oh, okay. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, now There's nothing you can do about it. So, so basically, it's, if you know that one is too late, just to throw it away. Don't, oh, don't, don't, don't waste any resources because you have remember all this machine learning have a deep pipeline. Because you, you know the delay time, you yeah, know yeah. the latency. Yeah. You cannot react to that anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So we actually just go through every single step. So we know that. So we, we through the process just to get rid of it. Would be a better idea to try to avoid that from yeah, that, that's why you need to really go to the algorithm. I'm not really on that algorithm side. So okay. you, maybe in the CD some of the people come up with a cool idea that you know, addiction. Yeah, but yeah, it's more more earlier stage. So one of my the students right now is writing a paper we, we're working with another professor in computer vision, they are trying to as early as possible. But then also the idea or seems to be suggesting that this kind of unfortunate situations happen a lot. Happen a lot, yes. It is because, because, of, because of variation. Uh, the reason is, is the following, is a computer, you know, computer vision or uh, algorithm researchers, they, they're only using a fixed data set, a key data set, and then they produce their result, public CDPR, well done, right? No. But, but the, the that's, that's me. <laughs> I know it's not useful. Perfect. I don't know. Do, do, it's very useful. But they, there's a gap here is that they don't deploy the real. So we are the lab, so we really deploy this. There is a huge gap. Huge gap here. So that's why some of this we can't really do. So I think there's a lot of. I don't have a thing. We should collaborate. Exactly. There, there, there's a huge potential opportunity here. It's, as I earlier mentioned, it's eventually nobody is a winner until you can end to end latency, right? You detect it by the time your car avoids people. That's you can consider as a success without hurting the people sitting on your vehicle. That is the end of end safety issue. Otherwise, it's not very helpful. You know. Here is another one we're working with the Bell Lab. Uh, I, I think we don't need to go through that. But almost the last one is uh, another thing is in the lab, we have this Intel delayed machines. We run on this, uh, on this across multiple vehicles as the training is our model. This is, well, we, I, I remember when GM asked me, why are you guys uh, called a clone? You know, why are you don't use a federated learning? And I told them, when we designed this federated learning, it's not, I, I never heard about it. 
So this was uh, the idea is we call the collaborative learning idea. You know, you have a model, all the vehicles you the same company have, you can deploy these models and then you can continue the learning this thing and eventually paint a, a better model to, for to redeploy this vehicle. So that was the one. Right now we actually is uh, working with the, it's already been sort of trying to deploy on the GM vehicles. The last thing we are working with is uh, we are trying to get an autonomous vehicle suite so that you can evaluate the different, that's what exactly what I try to do, uh, working with computer vision and some people, you know, you can choose in different type of the uh, type of this data, and then you have different functions, and then you have different framework, eventually different evaluate metrics, then you can start evaluate. This is still ongoing, we haven't really uh, reached another point. Okay, here it is. Uh, you know, all these things is, is not is impossible without the, with this uh, industry to support. So basically, as you can tell from here, is, is a very you know a pretty uh, a spectrum. Is we're looking from the uh, the chip design like NXP, uh, and then to the sensors, and then all the way to the OEM, and then to this uh, you know uh, you know computing equipment, uh, all the way to the cloud providers, so that we can start to build to see this whole end to end. This reach to my original point is we. All of this, this research, we really argue is on the end of the animations. So that's why we have a, a spectrum of these companies working with us. So it's uh, this is that's a UD and new campus, not as uh, bigger as uh, as really here, but we also getting a pretty big, you know, you know, campus zero. You can see even this one last year is already old because we have a new building. It's uh, just a building there. It's just old. And our campus are uh, different than the test bed here. I want to share with you is. We have a live a campus here. So this is exactly there. So as you can see, every a few months, there's a new building is built. And then you have you, you study have the people have traffic. We have an amateur station here. So the people are taking trains from Washington, DC, New York, Philadelphia, coming here. There are the 600 people working in this blue energy, this company. So they need to come from here. That is what we plan to have this autonomous shuttle is is the ship move them from the train station, come to here. So we, we have a live uh, uh, environment that was kind of unique, uh, different from MCT or you know the test bed here. It's uh, not as big as, as here, but it's uh, we you do have people. You know, it, it's, it's really uh, it's, and we also have constructions going there. So that was uh, the end of this uh, the presentation. I want to uh, the earlier you mentioned this. So the ECAN was just funding the last last month that uh, we are with several companies, uh, several universities trying to. Our goal is working on the sustainable mobility. Um, yeah, but to the university probably is not very helpful. This is the presentation I give to the industry as an example to join us as a member to join the ECAT as we can. Uh, you know, uh, working on working on that. Uh, last thing is I want to mention two relevant events in case you want to. You have some work here because uh, uh, Tamu have a lot of people working on that. So ACM have a journal uh, autonomous transportation system. So I organized a mobility special issue. Uh, deadline is May uh, May first. In case you have any paper, you probably can. If you have some paper right now in hands, you can think about the uh, go there. Also, if you are working on in this space, I also uh, launched a new conference called the IEEE Most. And it will be in May 17 or uh, 19 at the, in Detroit. So if you think about something, this year you don't, you don't have time to go, it's fine. Next year will be in Dallas. Yeah, so next year, most of 24 will be in Dallas, will be close to here. Think about you know, some of your latest work here. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.